Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple kids game core loop in about 60 lines of code. This is really aimed at beginner game developers who are trying to figure out how to make a game from scratch and want to see how to do some of the basic interactions and do it really quickly. So here you can see I've got a game with numbers that run at my player and my character or my player can click the number, type them, and if you type them fast enough, they'll reset and go back home. But if I don't type fast enough, they'll get to me. This was kind of inspired by me watching my kids trying to find the number keys on the keyboard and thinking hey I've got these awesome tune numbers from the asset store why don't I use them to make something so let me show you how this is put together and how you can build it yourself and how all of these systems work. Now this game is built in Unity, specifically Unity 2023.2.3 F1, which is gonna be quickly renamed to Unity 6 sometime in, in the very near future. It doesn't really matter which version you use though, you're just gonna need to install the Unity Hub and then install a Unity version under the Installs tab, and then finally create a new project. I know it feels like a lot of steps if you've never done it before, but once you've got it set up, all you do is hit that new project button and you keep creating new games from there on. So once you've got your new project, it's gonna to look like this. Oh, before I go on and forget, just in case you're not sure, when you create the new project, you'll pick 3D and then give it a project name right here. And I usually set up the services option, but you don't necessarily have to. So this is what your empty project and your blank scene will look like. You have a sample scene with a camera, a light, and it's a very, very boring game. So you need a couple things. First thing I did was pull in an environment. And for this one, I used the Cubico's world. It's just an environment that I already had, but you can grab any environment that you want, or you can op optionally just go to game object, create a new plane, and then scale this plane up to be 10 by 10, and then you'll have a nice big ground. I'm gonna use the world that I have though because I think it looks a little bit prettier. The next thing you'll need are characters. And again, for mine, I use those two numbers. I highly recommend you grab those or something else that looks really cool. But you can also just use a simple capsule. You can go to game object, 3D, and make a capsule and make that be your enemy. So this could be number one, and I could have number two, and so on. I'll create it real quick without the models, and then we'll swap them in and show you how you can put whatever you want there. So I've got my characters here, and I want this to be the number one that's gonna run at my player. So I'll just name it one, and then we're gonna add a component to it. We're gonna add a number script to it, and then we're gonna take a look at what that number script is, how it works, and how that makes the entire game work together. So I've got my number one here, and I'm gonna line him up. Let's go to my camera view. So if I click on my camera, I can see that my camera is looking over this direction. And if I grab my game view, I can actually dock it side by side and see exactly what my camera is viewing. My camera seems to be just kind of viewing down below the ground, so I'm gonna drag it up a little bit. And then I think I'll pull it backwards here so that the position's at about almost a positive 20 on that Z value. And then I can move my number one here. This is the character that's gonna run over here right up in the front. So you can see this is kind of like how my numbers were lined up in the other scene. In fact, if I save, and load up the sample scene, you see it's just like that. We've got characters just far away, but in the other one, they're capsules. So here's our capsule, let's go back. I've got number one right, right back there. Let's add a number two, and we'll drag him off to the side. We'll rename him to two, and then so on, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I want them to be all spread across the scene and I could do that manually, but I'm lazy and like to cheat. So I select them all, go to the position section and put an L, a bracket, an open one that's shipped to nine, and then do a negative five comma five and a closed bracket and, oh, let's try that one more time. L, oh, I had caps lock on L, negative five comma five, there we go, and they line up. Caps lock made it go lowercase and it messed the entire thing up. I don't know how I accidentally hit caps lock. Anyway, there's our numbers. We've got them all lined up and ready to run at our player. The last thing we need is a player, so we'll go to game object, go to 3D and create a sphere. We'll move that sphere up just out of the ground a little bit, and then we'll give it a player script. The player script is going to read our input and kill those enemies off. Now, the final thing that we need is navigation. Our enemy is need to be able to run to the player. To do that, we're gonna use the Unity navigation system that's built in through a package. Now to install that, you'll go to Window, 
package manager, and then in the Unity registry section, search for AI navigation. You can scroll down and see it. I've got version 2.0 installed. You'll have to hit install up here to get it put in there. But once it's there, you're gonna get access to the navigation component. So step one, go select all nine of these characters and give them a nav mesh agent. You see this component just got added. This is the one that's gonna be responsible for moving them towards the player. It drives the character around and we'll do navigation up and down hills and around buildings and through doors and all that stuff. We just have a straight plane though, so it's gonna be pretty simple navigation. Next, we need a navigation surface for it to know where to walk. So we'll click on the plane here, the ground, and we hit add component and we'll add a nav surface let's see surface nav mesh surface right there i just type nav and space s and it pops up so now i've got a nav mesh surface i leave all of the values at the default hit the bake button let's see did i get it there we go and now i've got a navigatable area right here all of this blue area is where the enemies or the numbers can walk if i save now and press play these guys should walk at me but then we'll take a look at the code and see how and why they're walking at me there they go, they start walking in and I can press the numbers to bounce them back. We just don't have numbers over their heads. So let's go switch over to the pretty version where I've just replaced the art and then we'll take a look at the code and see how it all works and what makes them disappear, come back and op optionally kill our player and restart the game. All right, here they are, the pretty numbers. And by the way, remember these numbers were actually free on the asset store, but I'll put a link to them. I think they're 10 or $20 normally. And this environment is relatively cheap too, but you can use whatever environment you want. And also you should always check out those free assets. That's where I got these and kind of got inspired. So these numbers will run at me, but let's take a look at how that works. Here's the number script. There are only two scripts in this project, remember in less than 60 lines of code. The first thing that we do is in the start method, we cache our nav have mesh agent component. That's the one that you saw me add just a little while ago. And we cache the starting position. By say cat by cache, I just mean that we're storing them off into a variable that's a member of this component. So it's going to be saved off so that we can access it later. The start position so that we can reset our character back to its beginning place. And then have mesh agent so that we can tell the character when to start and to stop. We also cache the player's location or the player's instance actually so that we can move towards the player. And if we decided to move the player at runtime it would chase and move towards the player optionally. So we've got our player there and we've got all three of those components. And the next thing that we do in start, which by the way, gets called for every component or every game object and every component when the game starts. So when this object appears, when our number appears, this method is getting called automatically. You don't have to do anything as long as the object is there, it just kind of kicks off and happens. So what do we do? Well, we set our destination of the nav mesh agent to our player's destination. We have to use the transform to reference its position. And then we tell it to stop. So we say, hey, here's your destination, but you're stopped, you're not moving yet. Then we do an invoke of this method named start running. You can optionally use quotes here, but I like to use the name of method. So if I rename this, it will have the new name. But we invoke this na method named start running after a random amount of time, zero to 10 seconds. So that's why they're delayed and they don't seem to all come at once. They just pick a random amount of time and they start running by setting is stopped to false. That's what this start running method is here. If you've never seen this method expression or this method syntax, by the way, it's the same as the normal one here, the statement body. It's just called an expression body. It lets you shrink it down to a single line. If you have a one line or something, it makes it a little bit smaller and nicer to read. But if you didn't understand that, I just want to make sure that that's clear. Next, we have an update method. In the update method, we check to see if our distance from our character, this number, and the player is less than one. So if we get within one meter, we just call that game over and we reload the scene. So if we reload the scene, that's essentially our, our game over. Now, finally, we have a die method. This isn't called in here. This is a public method that's called from somewhere else. Public methods are usually, typically, all, they're supposed to be called by other scripts and other components to do things. That's why they're public, so that they can be called from other stuff. If it's not public, it means it can only be called internally, like this start running method. But die is public because it's going to be called from something else, specifically from our player. Let's see what it does, and then we'll see how it's called. In die on line 34, we reset our position by setting transform position back to that start position. Then we stop our nav mesh agent, and then we do the same thing we did at the beginning. We invoke start running after a random amount of time, but here we give it at least one second so that they're dead for a minimum of a second and then restart. Now, finally, let's go over to the player. 
Remember, the player was just that little spirit. Could be anything, though. Could be like a cool cannon or something cute that they're trying to chase after. But the script for it is really simple. We have a couple things. First, we're using a serialized field that's an array of all of our numbers. Now, this number is our number class, so it's the reference to the things that we're going to make die. That's why we have it here, so that we can publicly reference this die method down here on line 19. Let's see how this is filled, though. In on validate, which is again using that expression body method body syntax i'll get the wording right eventually it's calling the on validate is filling up all of our numbers by finding all of the numbers in the scene it uses find objects by type with the type of number here it has a sort mode the sort mode you put in here doesn't matter you can also use find objects of type which doesn't have the sort mode by type is just their new one that's more explicit about it. I wish it would just default to none. That would, would have been better, like blank with none. But anyway, you pass in none or use find objects of type. Then we order them by the name. So that way they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'll go exactly in order, just the way that I want. And then finally turn them into an array because that's the type that I have defined here. Otherwise, they'd be an IE numerable and it wouldn't be serializable. This happens in the editor before we run. This actually gets serialized off and saved. If I go back over here and select my player, you can see that all numbers is actually already there and it's got all of my numbers in it. You can go in there and verify that on yours if you run into any issues, you should see it there. Then in our update method, we loop from zero to nine and we check to see if the player pressed either the alphanumeric keys along the top or one of the numpad keys by checking if the key was down and we use key code alpha plus I. So it's gonna start at zero, it'll be alpha one, I said alpha, it's alpha one plus I, so alpha one plus zero is alpha one. So we start with the first one and then we go all the way up through number nine and here we're checking the keypad again and the alpha one. If we pressed either one of them, we just log that they pressed whichever one that was and then we tell the number at that index to die. So it's gonna be zero for number one and again, if we look over here, you see that that's element zero is actually number Number one, that's the way that it should work. All arrays are zero based index, at least in C sharp and Unity stuff, and same with lists and your general collection. So that's all you need to get it working. The numbers will run at you, they'll chase you, they'll try to you know, restart your game. And hopefully it's useful for you to start building some other types of games and start to see how some of these systems come together. If you want to see more of this stuff, you got questions about specific things or ways to improve things, make sure that you drop a comment down below and let me know. And if you want to learn just basic game development from the beginning, make sure that you check out the game programmer course at game.courses. Go over all of the fundamentals from loading, saving, multiplayer, local multiplayer stuff. Um, and er everything else that you need to know for scene management and the core of game development stuff. If you're interested in that, I'll make sure there's a link down below. I've also got a bundle with the multiplayer course if you really want to build multiplayer online games. Anyway, check this stuff out. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you have any requests for different types of games or if your kids like this stuff. And make sure that you check the links for the assets down below. See you in the next video. Bye.